Welcome to Your Bookkeeping Matters. I'm your host, Lisa Turner, a professional bookkeeper, registered BAS agent, and your small business cheerleader and mentor. I'm also a wife and mum to two little people. This podcast is for small business owners who want to manage their numbers the right way. It will be short and sweet episodes each week on business and bookkeeping matters in an easy to understand way with real quick tips or changes you can put in place having a huge positive impact at the same time up leveling yourself so you can be in control and confident that you know your bookkeeping matters. Let's dive into this week's episode. Hello friends, you are in for a real treat today. As you know, this season of Your Bookkeeping Matters is all about what to do next in your business and how you can grow and look after your finances. So today we're talking legals, which is something truly non-negotiable. Now, while it can definitely be a huge investment in your business, these legal fees can actually save you money and make you money in your business. And to go over some really key pieces of the legal puzzle, I am beyond excited to share with you my dear friend and my own solicitor, Tracy Myler Crane from her legal practice, TM Solicitor. Tracy has a really unique approach to supporting you and is all about doing law differently. She specializes in small business law and has an empower ethos, meaning she's all about empowering you, minimizing risk so that you are confident you are set up and protected legally. Should you run into any issues, you will have complete peace of mind. Everything is in order. Part of her mission and approach is to have things in place to avoid future legal dramas. How did Tracy get to where she is today? She has a sneaky double degree in law and management, 20 years of experience with the bulk in litigation and dispute resolution, which is why she's all about flipping this to help you avoid or better deal with issues in the first place. And in this episode, she shares really passionately about things you shouldn't do and that it's okay if you did it the wrong way. And now that you know better how to really change the legal landscape of your business, giving your clients a better experience and using your legals to help your business grow and protecting your income and making sure you get paid. Before we start, one really important thing I want to mention is business legals and what they are as we'll be talking about them. It's your basic core trio of legal documents that all businesses need. One, your client agreement or terms and conditions. Two, your website terms and conditions. And three, your privacy policy. Tracy is, of course, an expert on these and I'll link her podcast, Rise Up in Business, in the show notes for you where she goes over all of these in great detail. Don't miss when Tracy shares her brilliantly unique set of masterclasses that really do help level up your business and grow your financial position. Let's get into today's episode. So hello and a really special welcome to my friend and colleague, Tracy Myler Crane. Thank you so much for joining us for a chat today, Tracy. Hello, Lisa. I'm so happy to be on your podcast having this conversation. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no, thank you. I have been so excited for this episode because I just know there is going to be loads of juicy information here for small business owners, both new and and old, it's really applicable to everyone to check these things that we're going to touch on. Absolutely. So let's start with a question I see all the time in forums and clients asking me, why can't I use a template for my legals? It saves me money. It's doing what it's supposed to be, protecting my finances. Got a lot to say on that, but the first thing I'll say is, is it? Is it doing what it needs to do to protect your finances and how do you know? So I get asked this a lot too and I know that you and I have spoken about this previously. When we're starting out in business and we're wearing all the hats and we're doing all the things and we don't know what we don't know and we do the best we can at the time with the information we've got, often that can mean you land on a website, you buy a template or you borrow a friend's or 
worse, perhaps you might Google something, Mm -hmm. but you've cobbled something together and you've put something in place and you think, there you go, I've got it in place, that's good enough. Well, won't comment on whether it's good enough or not, but I understand. I understand that as business owners, that's what we can do. Often at the beginning when we're overwhelmed, wearing all the hats, doing all the things, but we reach a point in business, particularly when we're up-leveling, where we are established businesses. This business is something. This is working. Obviously, I'm going to keep going, which is something that we often have question marks around at the beginning and think, oh, I don't want to spend too much money on this or I don't want to look at business structure because it might not turn out to be anything and, you know, it'll just be a waste of money. What I say to that is, quite simply, DIY is for Bunnings, not for your legals. And I think templates have their place. I'm talking spreadsheets, winning weeks, those types of things. Templates can be good, but not for your legal documents. Your legal documents form one of the three pillars of your risk mitigation strategy in business. And this is something that a lot of people don't realise. So as small business owners, we're going to manage our risk, right? So we're working really hard to build something. We don't want to lose it. Something goes awry, someone sues us, someone makes a complaint, we've got cash flow issues. We don't want to lose it. We've got to protect what we're building. That's called risk mitigation. So what makes up your risk mitigation strategy? What protects you? Three things, your business structure, your insurance, and your legal documents. So because they are so important, do you really want to DIY them? And once I have that conversation with business owners, they just sort of look at me blankly and say, no, but I didn't know. I didn't realize. And that's okay. No judgment. You don't know if template documents do what they need to do until you need to rely on them. And if they don't, it's too late. Exactly. And that I love that you've touched on that, that when people think it's doing what it's supposed to be and you said, but is it? Because you're so right. It's a classic case of you don't know what you don't know until you need to lean on it and it's just too late. It is. That's exactly right. And what you're doing when you're issuing your legal documents to clients, obviously we want to make sure our client experience is a really positive one with our businesses, right from go to woe, onboarding, providing services to offboarding. When you send a template document out, what you're really saying is either I don't know what I'm doing with my documents, I'm really good at my services, but I'm not really good at running a business because they're two very different things, or worse, you're sending a message of lack of professionalism because often the templates that I see, they don't meet businesses where they are in terms of language, branding, services, pain points, all of those things. So often there's a mismatch. So your client's spoken to you or they've, they've checked out your website or they've seen you on socials, fantastic. They're really looking forward to working with you and then they get your document as a template. doesn't really work for your business. It doesn't not- look and feel no, like you and extend that's right. on that experience. Yeah. That's right. It should be an extension of you. Your legal documents need to be an extension of you and your business. You should be really proud of them. They should be branded. They should look and sound like you. They should apply to how you do business. They should apply to how the client's going to work with you. And often they don't. In fact, I've never seen one that does. That's a big call, but it's true. So clients will often come to me and say either I've spent this money on templates, I don't understand it, I'm not sure what to do, am I covered or not, I I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. Or they come to me and say, I don't know where to go to get support with this because I bought a template and I don't have a clue. And both of those positions are fair, it's true. Of course you don't. Exactly. And that's what I was going to ask next. When we say they don't protect you or they don't cover you, that's exactly what, I, what I'm referring to. If you could just expand on that a little bit in terms of why they can't rely on them, why they're not protected because they're not customised to them or their services or their processes. Yeah, absolutely. So when we're putting together our client service agreements, you can call it whatever you like. If, if you follow me, you will have heard me call them business T's and C's or your client services agreement. You can call your core legals whatever you like in terms of engaging your client. So they need to make sure that you are meeting your obligations as a service provider or even a product-based business under the Australian consumer law. That's the first thing. If you don't know what those obligations are, how do you know if your documents meet them? If they don't meet them, you're not protected. You can't rely on your documents. That's the first thing. Second thing is it needs to be consistent with the services you provide, the way you provide them, your cancellation policy, your refunds policy, what happens if there's misaligned expectations, what happens if if there's to be add-ons, how do you get paid, what to do if there's a dispute, what to do if you want to terminate. All of those things need to be covered in your legals 
in a way that's consistent with your business. Now, if you issue something, but then your systems and processes aren't consistent with that, so your documents say one thing, but you do something else, you are in a world of pain, my friend, in the Mm -hmm. event that a client comes back to you and says, oh, I'm really unhappy with that work, or I didn't think I'd get that invoice, or I want these extra add-ons, or I want these revisions. You are in a world of pain because you don't have a document to rely on that is governing that relationship. There's a mismatch. Because every business is not the same, so it shouldn't be a cookie-cutter approach in terms of using those. No, there's no one size fits all, despite what you might think. I've got an interior design business and it's the same as my friends, I'll just use hers. But it's never the same. Or I'm an online coach or I run a VA business. They're all different. Your business is unique to you and it's different from somebody else down the road. And you're entitled to do things your way and they're entitled to do things their way. But the key is to make sure that you're complying with the consumer law, you're legally protected and you're managing your client expectations from the outset. Exactly. And I'm in that boat in terms of I did exactly that. I used a template specific to my business and my industry when I first started out because I simply didn't know. And that's why I really wanted to ask this question today. So for people starting out or thinking, what do I need to check on? This is something really important that once I knew, I invested in making sure I had documents customized to me for my clients and my processes. And you just made that so easy. So what would be the first step if someone wants to get their current legals checked to see if they're protected and where they need to be? Oh, absolutely. Reach out and have a conversation. So if you have a business lawyer, reach out and have a conversation. If you'd like to talk to us, make contact, reach out and have the conversation. That's the starting point. There is no judgment. You shouldn't feel bad. You've credit to you for getting to where you are in business. Let's just acknowledge that. I think that business owners are too hard on themselves. We don't give ourselves credit for achieving what we've achieved to get to where we are today. So that's the first thing. And I can attest to that. There is no judgment from Tracy. She did not even comment that I'd been using a template. So yeah. Of course, we do the best we can with the information we've got and that's okay. We don't need to be hard on ourselves. But once you know better, you do better. And you want to make sure as well that the lawyer you're working with, you feel good. You've got to feel good, right? Because your legal documents will evolve with you and change as your business grows and evolves. And you need to be able to go back to the person and say, hey, I've got these pain points or now I've got these new services or I've got this new offering. Can we dive in, please, and do an amendment or an update? Yeah, of course. So building that relationship is really important too because your legal documents aren't set and forget because as your business grows and your offerings change, you need to be able to update them. So reach out and have a conversation and get the ball rolling to get them audited and reviewed. Or you might know just from listening to us now, Lisa, you might know I don't even want anyone to look at them. I just want new ones. And that's okay too. That's that's also equally as common. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. So you touched on something really important there. Have a good relationship with who you want to get them done and know there's no judgment. Don't feel bad because you don't know what you don't know. And that's what this season of the show is all about because now you've started your business, you're ready to switch it up a notch and do things differently. So from a legal perspective, what are some of the other next steps we as small business owners can take to invest in our business growth and protect our income and our business? First thing to do, obviously, your legal documents. That includes the documents that you're engaging your clients with and the documents that are governing your website, including privacy. Next thing, revisit your business structure. What I see really often, and I know that you see it as well, Lisa, is that when people start out, it's just, oh, quickly, I'll just set up as a sole trader and I'll think about it later and it'll be right and I'll, I'll see if the business is going to be anything first Guilty. before I... Guilty. Yes, I did it too. I didn't take my own advice and, gosh, I paid for it. It's so an did administrative I. nightmare to change, but you can change. But revisiting the business structure because, like I said a moment ago, Your risk mitigation strategy in your business comprises your business structure, your insurance and your legal documents. It's where you get your protection. So if you don't know what we're talking about and if you're listening to this and scratching your head and thinking, I don't know, then inform yourself in relation to the business structure options. Um, You can jump over to my website and there's a masterclass on there specifically on business structure, specifically for people going, what are you talking about, Tracy? Lisa, what do you mean? Business structure, it's there for you to listen to so that you can learn exactly what it is you need to be thinking about. So getting your business structure 
right or revisiting it would be the next thing I would say. In terms then of up-leveling and looking at the business growth and trajectory, I would pause and say, let's look at the team and make sure that all contractors and all employees have got current relevant employee or contractor documents in place. That's a big one. It is. It really is. That's where I would say to start. I I could just go on and on, but if you're talking about up-leveling and protecting, start there. You're doing really well if you cover all of those bases. Perfect. And you said if you don't know what we're talking about, educate yourself and things like that. Once they go, okay, well, I, I simply don't know, what would be an action step for them? Is that done through something like a strategy session? Just reach out to your solicitor and book something like that with them to find out these things? Yeah, absolutely. So you can book in for a free chat with me on the website if you've got questions and just need some clarity. But if you do know that you want to do a deep dive into something, then yes, you can book in straight away for a strategy session via the website where I get the information I need and we focus on just your business and go through these issues so that you can ask all the things, I can share all the information, I can give you all the advice you need so that you can make an informed choice moving forward and you've got a crystal clear path of next steps from there. Amazing. It's perfect. I just can't stress how important all this stuff is. One of the great free resources that I know you have that everyone should use is your annual legal checklist. Are all these kinds of things covered in that? Yes, absolutely. Clients often say to me, oh, there's so much to know legally in terms of running a business. What are the things and where do I start? So I've developed the checklist, which is designed for you to look at once a year, hence the title, annual, but it covers all of the things. And you can grab a free copy from the website, but it's designed for you to cast your eye over and just, yep, got that, got that. Oh no, I definitely need to talk about that. What's that? Or that doesn't apply to me. And then pop it in the bottom drawer and bring it out again next year and just make sure everything's still the same. That's updated. That's current. Oh, actually we've done this now. That all of a sudden is relevant. So it's designed to be a resource so that when you look over it, You, as a business owner, have absolute peace of mind that nothing has fallen through the gaps in your business legally. Great. And I love that this checklist, you don't have to know what the things mean. If you read it on there and you haven't done it, well, that's a prompt. It's something that you might need to look into or review or put into place. And that's what's really great about checklists. They're prompts to help you remember things that you don't know. You don't know all these things. Now, besides using a template that doesn't protect business owners, what is one of the most common mistakes that you see being made? People not having anything in place and thinking, I'll get to it later. That's so detrimental. Well, it is because you're completely exposed. And in business, it only takes one client, one supplier or one contractor with misaligned expectations or with a dispute over money or something like that to take your focus off generating revenue in your business or growing your business, and it can start to unravel. It only takes one, and I've seen it. There is nothing I haven't seen when it comes to what can go wrong in business, honestly. So when you don't have anything in place thinking, I've been going for this long, nothing's happened till now, to that I say, well done you, good luck, don't rely on that as a risk mitigation strategy. That's not wise, but you are just tempting fate. It's like Russian roulette, really. Absolutely, because like you said, if something goes wrong, they have to step away from the business to deal with it because they didn't have something in place to stop it happening and bang, they're no longer generating revenue or looking after their current clients. It just kills their business and their finances every which way. And I already know the answer to this then. What is your tip for someone to follow or fix or avoid that mistake? Reach out and have the conversation. If you do nothing else, if you're listening to this and you don't have something in place or you've got something in place that you feel or you know is not working or inadequate, reach out and have the conversation. Book in with someone for a conversation. Book in with me to have a conversation and you've done the first thing. The momentum will build from there. It's not overwhelming. It doesn't need to be complicated. I know that when it comes to law, it can often feel boring and dry and stuffy and all of those things, but I promise you, it doesn't have to be that way. And when you work with us, it's not. We're so not that. No, she is definitely not a typical solicitor. It is fun. I enjoy doing my reviews and putting all the changes in place. I love it. I'm so glad you do. And I know that lots of people do because they tell me, but the process should be empowering. You should enjoy the process. You should come away from the process feeling empowered, feeling confident, and having that real peace of mind 
that you've got in place what you need. And you know that when you're lying in bed at night and you get that sinking stomach feeling and you go, oh, I don't know if I've got that. Oh, my gosh, I just don't know. We don't want that. No. And we could actually do away with that. Book in for a conversation, start the ball rolling, the momentum will build. You will not regret it. Amazing. Now, something really exciting that will help lots of people avoid loads of business and financial pain, I wish that these had been around when I first started Accounted For You, is that Tracy has a brilliant masterclass series that she's touched on earlier, The Legally Empowered Entrepreneur. Can you tell us about these? Oh, I would love to. You know how excited I was to yes. launch that. I worked on this for about 12 months because what I found in my business that small business owners were coming to me week in and week out asking the same questions. And I realised after a period of time, there was a top five things, top five things I get asked about all the time. So that says to me, if this many people are coming to me asking me these questions, I'll bet you there's a lot more that aren't coming but have the same question. So I've launched a masterclass series and they're really affordable price points. The masterclasses are $47 each and they're all under an hour and I've addressed them. So just like you and I are chatting now, Lisa, I've recorded the masterclasses on topics that I know are important and valuable for small business owners and are the pain points. And you go in, grab one, have a listen. Oh my gosh, guess what? It's all distilled. It's simple. It's clear. I understand. I now know what I need to do from there. They're accessible. And that's the thing. Even though I try to be accessible and I try to get across the point that I'm not scary and boring and stuffy and I don't judge people, some people still don't want to. And that's okay. You don't have to now. It's all there and you can listen to it in your own time. In really easy to understand, short formats, like when you say an hour, that's really short when you're learning something so important about your business. Now, before we wrap up, I have two quick questions that I ask of my guests. And the first one is, what is one tip that you find makes your finances easier for you? Knowing my money, know how to read my zero reports. And thanks to you, I now know that because the tip is I can actually access the status quo in my money anytime that I want to by being educated and knowing how to read those reports. And that really is key because there's no point in doing all your bookkeeping and numbers and not knowing what the figures mean. So that's a great tip and I'm glad that you are now confident in reading those reports. It makes me so happy to hear that. Yes. What do you wish you did differently with your numbers in the very early days? I wish I had have found you sooner. Bless. (laughs) So when I started, I thought I'd do it myself because we all do and it's new and I, you know, just did a few little things. Didn't take very long to realise that's not going to work and that's not wise, but I just jumped in with anybody. I didn't do any due diligence. I didn't do any research. I just thought, okay, I'll just jump in with anybody. Someone said that person's good. I'll just go there. Didn't really put much more effort into it than that and that wasn't the best decision for my business. So I wished I had have found you earlier. (sighs) Thank you. That really means a lot. And that ties back to something that you touched on earlier to find the right person and the right fit. And that just applies to anything you outsource in your business. So that's a really great tip. Fabulous. This has been so amazing as I knew it would be. I will pop in the show notes where people can connect with you and find your brilliant resources. Where is the best place for people to find you? So I'm very active on Instagram and my handle is at TM Solicitor or you can check out all of the resources and reach out to me via our website, which is tmsolicitor.com.au. Brilliant. Thank you, Tracy, again so much. And thank you to listening along with us to learn these things that you can do to look after your business matters. I would absolutely love it if you could leave a review to help your bookkeeping matters reach and support more business owners to learn and grow. And I will catch you next week. 